Jesus. Let us go to God in prayer. All of us, not me. All of us, let's pray and thank God for this message that we are about to hear. Father, Lord, bless you in the name of We worship you, Lord God. We give glory to your name. We give praise to your name, Lord. We worship you. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our God and our Father, we give you for the Lord, we thank you for the mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Glorious Father, King of glory, the creator of the heavens and the earth, yes. our heavenly God, we thank you for this opportunity to sit in our presence and hear your wisdom. Almighty Father, as you bless us with your word, O oh Lord, we pray that whatever you give us this day, the blessings, the rebuke, Almighty Father, let your word find a place in our heart. Help us that the enemy must not take away what you are giving unto us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We may be seated. Uh, before we start, there are a few things I want to ask. Uh, how many youth do we have in this place? If we have them, can they stand on their feet, please? Let us see them. Seriously? Sure. I don't believe this. Almost even for conditions, eh? Serious? Are you really in Zion? Or do you think you are in Zion? Are you sure? Baba, what was in the past? Sisi, what was in the past? Bogan, what was in the past? You're not a youth in Christ. I'm so surprised. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. I'm so surprised. I didn't know that we have Madeiras in this place. Amen. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this is what I'm going to ask. Three people that will tell us something before we start. Um, don't be afraid. You are in the presence of the Lord. Uh, this program started on Friday. On Saturday. Friday. Friday. Uh, number three from back, my brother, stand up. Three from back. Let's roll. I'm sorry. Sissy? Three from right. Where? Not come by. Who's the youth this set? Going on. Put somebody on the spot. You. You know. Where now? Beg you more. We are going to start with you, my brother. You are going to tell us what you learned from Friday today. You are a youth. One, two, three. You two sit down. When it's finished, you follow. Make sure your voice is up so that we can hear. They must hear you in the house. And don't be afraid because when they're playing with your friends, they're not afraid. Yeah. I heard your voice every time I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us. We are listening. Oh, I learned to be more obedient to the Lord. I can't hear you. I learned to be more obedient to the Lord. Amen. 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 Bless God for your life. Amen. 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 Okay. I learned that there is more to life than dreams. Okay. As a person, you should always be obedient to God and to stop lies. Amen. 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 Yeah, the young Ruti. Let's hear from you. Um, 
learned that uh, it's good to be a godly youth. It's also good to be uh, a servant, a faithful servant of the Lord. Um, and it does not pay to be unfaithful to God. It will always result in bad consequences. Amen. I thought you were talking to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> let me read. Let me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's nice to be in the presence of the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, please, be here with me. I'm a fast, fast talker. Mm -hmm. I will try. God, will, the Holy Spirit will help me this way. Amen. Because really, when I start talking, I fly. Some of you won't hear me, but the Lord will help, will be helping me for a long time, a lot of times. I've been learning a lot. Jesus is good. All the time. Uh, there's something I learned about horrible and where I was working. Time. Time. We must respect time at always, at all times. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to speak to youth here. Me, I'm going to speak to the whole house, not only the youth. Mm. Everybody's a youth here. Yes. Uh, who's older than me? <laughs> <laughs> the only person who's older than me is God. <laughs> uh, let's open our Bible. We are going to talk about come out among them, youth. And touch not and clean things. Come out. Where are you coming out from? We will find out. Let's read Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen. But before we go there, is there anybody who's going, having a native Bible there? A secular Bible or a native Bible? Is there anybody who's having one? Guru, Kosa, Venda, English? Yeah. Elders, Kosa. Can you check something for me, Papa? The Mayor Alephiticus chapter 6, verse 30. Alephiticus. 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 Chapter 6, verse 30. I'm reading for us. If you have it. Other people don't open it. Please. What he read has got nothing to do with our meeting today. I wanted to prove a point. There's something that I found out last night when I was sitting there. Uh, we must be aware of this other visions. There was a Bible I was reading yesterday. As we know, we've been warned many times that we must rely on the King James Version. The same chapter that he read, the Bible that I was reading, is from verse 1 to verse 23. It does not have 24. <coughs> So when you read Bibles, please, whatever Bible version you read, be sure you compare it with the King James Version, or else you're going to lose the essence of the message and start preaching other gospels that you don't know about. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And can somebody read that? I'll read it myself, because I prefer that one. So somebody said that the youth must read. I discovered that there's no youth in this place. Only old people. No, read it myself, don't worry. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Come out among them, 
used and touch not unclean things. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to talk about separation. Separation. Come out. You separate yourself from the people of the world, from this corrupt world. Uh, I'm going to start where the Israelites were living in Egypt. When they were coming out of Egypt, uh, there's a lot of stories that is going on, a lot of preachings, people that preach things they don't understand. When people left from Egypt, God gave them favor. He said to them, ask from your neighbors when you are getting out. So God gave permission to the Israelites to plunder the Egyptians. Why did he do that? Because they've been misusing them for 430 years. So it was about time that they get paid. So you must understand something. Don't, don't be misled. And when they conducted Egyptians, they took a lot of adultery from Egypt unknowingly. Because the Israelites were a chosen generation of God himself. And when they left Egypt, please don't lose me here. Let me not lose you here. They were given rings. They were given gold. They were given all precious things by the Egyptians. And when they went out, they plundered them with these things. Why did they take them? Why did God allow them to take rings from the adulterous nation? People do not understand why. Today they are preaching a different gospel about these things. They said, ah, ah, if God allowed the Israelites to take these earrings and this bracelet and all these things, it means God allows it. That's the preaching of nowadays. That was not the purpose why God said they must plunder the Egyptians. He wanted to use those things to build those ornaments that he needed in his tabernacle mm. for the praise of worship, not to wear on our bodies. Mm. That is not for us to wear those things on our bodies. Mm. It's for the people of the world. Even Joseph, that my brother was talking about, when he became a prime minister in Egypt, he was given those things by the, by the, by the, the king, Pharaoh. <coughs> but what you must understand is one, Joseph is a chosen generation. It's not like the Egyptians. He did not use those things. He did not wear them. So today, when we listen to the word of God, when you go outside, when you listen to messages, uh, they will tell you a different gospel. If you have read this morning's devotional and yesterday's devotional, you will understand what is going on in this world. So when they left, they were <coughs> past the Red Sea. They went to Canaan and they captured those lands that God had helped them to capture. God said to them, come out, separate yourself. <coughs> and <coughs> when he said separate yourself, there was a lot of things that God said. He talked about food, that they must eat, they must not touch this, they must not touch this. If you understand and you are a child of God and you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in those precepts, you will understand one thing. What God was talking about was not ordinary food. It involves a lot of things. He, the, the Israelites is a chosen generation. In this Israelites, we have the Levites. Who are these Levites? They are the priests of God. And these Levites, what do they do? They carry the vessels of God. So God wanted them to be separated from the godly things, to be taken out of the world things and be holy unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to be adulterous. That's one thing that God hates. 
He hates it with passion. Adultery. He does not share his glory with anybody. That's one thing you must understand. God wants his glory for himself. Because nobody in this earth deserves his glory. You can remember when Jesus was walking in this earth. He said nobody is good while you are still walking in this earth. There's only one. God in heaven. That's the only good person. <coughs> so you must understand when they say, God said, separate yourself. Do not touch unclean things. He wanted them to come out of the things of the world and separate themselves to him. Why? Because when they left Egypt, it was not only Israel. They were mixed multitude. Yes. That's why they had the problem in the wilderness. Mm. Because people who did not understand God, they are used to this idols. They are used to these idols. They cannot trust God because they don't know him. Mm. Only the Israelites knew him. But because of the influence of the Egyptians, they gave Moses and God challenges in the, in, in, in the wilderness. That's why God wanted to wipe them out. There's one man that I always respect in my life, and that is Moses. The Israelites not sent him to go and plead for them to God. When God wanted to wipe them out, he was talking to him alone. He wasn't talking to anybody else. He said, move out. Let me destroy all these people. And I will make you a nation out of you. If it was today, with these ministers that we have, Moses should have said, yes, I will stand for it. I will be a your new generation. But Moses was something else. He went to God and pleaded for these people. These people that didn't even know that God wanted to wipe them out. But Moses stood up because he was separated. He came out. He understood who is this God. If you sit down and listen to Moses and study Moses, you will understand that Moses was supposed to be the next king of Egypt. But because of who he understands who God is, he separated himself. He wanted to suffer with his brethren, his, his life, because he knows the things of this world are temporary. We, we live only less than, uh, today is about 70. If you are 80, it's by the grace. If you are 90, thank God, you will reach that place. Our time limit is, is about 70. If you reach there, you might just thank God that you reach that place. Moses knew the things of this world was just for temporary. He did not want to share in the wealth of Egypt because he knew what was happening. He wanted to share the pains and the grief of his people, the Israelites. That's why he separated himself and got out. This is what is happening today in our generation. God wants us to separate, to come out of the world, to come out and separate ourselves. Remember, when God was dealing with Aaron and his children, they were priests unto him. They were the only people who were allowed to go into the world of holies that was uh, uh, Aaron. Not everybody was supposed to go there. That's why he had this chain, so that when he goes <coughs> in to go and sacrifice for them, they must hear those chains. When he goes inside, so the Israelites will know this person is still alive. But if those things are not ringing, they know God has finished him. He's got a lot of problems. It's like today. This God is wonderful. There's something that I learned on the cross of Calvary. It's not easy to get that. That place, there was war. People, if you really read, you will understand what Jesus went through. Uh, because I like to read. I like to study a lot. That's one thing about me. I don't have friends today. My only friend is Jesus. That's the only friend I have. Because I don't have time for it to talk. I don't have that time. I'm sorry. What happened on the cross is very painful. It's painful. Two people <coughs> were there. That was mercy and justice. Justice is a stubborn person. Maybe you don't know this. You know only God, as Pastor Paulita was saying on yesterday, is a God of mercy and love. He's a God of judgment. Be careful. Whatever you do in your secret places, 
is watching you. Whatever you do is recorded in heaven. If you don't know, you have a snitch that is walking around with you every day. That snitch, the day you pass here, if you are an evildoer, he's going to tie your hands at the back and tell you straight, I'm going to report to God. I'll meet you on the other side when I'm done. That is one of the revelations I got from Borobo. Then you'll go and report. When he arrives at that site, he'll tell you, remember what we did on earth. Mm -hmm. So what, wherever you are, whether you're in secret, whether you're in school, whether you're in your house, whether you're murmuring one against your husband, against your wife, against your mother, against <coughs> your sister, against your brother, be careful. Because somebody's watching you. You have been recorded as a youth. Whatever you took yesterday from your mother is recorded in the heaven. They know about it. When you go and say, ah, I did not do it, you say, okay, fine. Wait, we'll show you something. You'll appear on the screen. You'll see something. Then you'll be crying, crying, crying. It won't help you. So, brothers and sisters, let's be careful about this Christianity. It's very serious. Most, I mean, say, Aaron, he was in the prison lineage. He was offering the sacrifices unto God for the people of Israel. The same thing, that was the shadow of what was supposed to happen. The big boss came. He came and made one sacrifice once and for all, for you and me, so that today we don't need a priest. We don't need a priest to go to the Holy of Holies. As long as you are his child, as long as you are born again, as long as you are righteous, as long as you are holy, as long as you are truthful, you have the right to go into the Holy of Holies. Why we have a priest who was crucified for us? Let me wait there for a while. I want to go back to the cross. When Jesus was crucified, there were two people who were fighting. That was mercy and justice. Justice wanted justice to be done on the cross of Calvary. Mercy was pleading for mercy for the people of the world, you and me, that we must be saved, that we must be delivered. But mercy did not accept what, I mean, so justice did not accept what mercy was saying. Because he wanted the fulfillment of the cross to be fulfilled. Even when Jesus was suffering, when the enemy was torturing him, you don't know what was happening on the cross. Not by the people, I'm talking about the devil, what he did to our Lord on the cross of Calvary. He tortured him. People, you don't know what he said. This devil, what he said to our boss. The things that he uttered from his mouth against Jesus Christ. He said, you said you are a son of God. Prove yourself on the cross. Jesus, Jesus Christ kept quiet. He's the Lamb of God. He came to redeem us. When he died, Mercy said to, to Justice, do you accept the sacrifice now? Justice said, no. He hasn't died yet. He's still on the cross. Until he dies, and I saw him rose, then I will accept Mercy. Hey. But not before. Jesus Christ died and went and slept. It was terrible in heaven. The angel were crying. They wanted to come and finish up everybody on that, on that day. But justice said, no, you can't. Justice must be served. He must go through it. You cannot interfere. Children were told, were brought to see what was happening on Jesus Christ. They cried in heaven. They cried. The children were crying because of what was happening to the boss, Jesus Christ. And when he was buried, they allowed the children to come in and look at him. The children said, he is sleeping peacefully. But mercy still refused to accept the sacrifice. He refused. He said, no, he is still dead. He is not a reason. So I cannot accept it. Until Jesus Christ arose. That day when Jesus arose, the whole of heaven break into rapture. Mm. They break into rapture. They were praising God mightily. 
And mercy said to justice, do you now accept the sacrifice? Justice said, I accept the sacrifice. It is finished. It's been fulfilled. And mercy from that day and justice, they emerge together in Christ. So that's why Jesus Christ is mercy and justice in one. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's clap hand for the Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our king. He's our boss. Mercy and justice in him. So when you do these little, little foxes out there, be aware that Jesus, you took Jesus again back to the cross. Oh, it's terrible what we are being <coughs> as human beings, especially Christians. Mm. I understand about the people of the world. They really don't understand. They really don't know. Mm. And they don't care. You and me, we know all these things. But what are we doing every day? We are busy sacrificing our Lord. Every time you see, remember, you are crucifying him again. Mm. That blood is flowing again on the cross of color because of your disobedience. So let's understand who we are. Where are we? What are we doing? There's something that happened in the New Testament. I'm going from the Old Testament now. Now the New. I talked about mercy and justice. I talked about something that you people, you may be knowing, but you are ignoring it. You are not ordinary. I don't care whether you're a youth, or an old man, or an old lady, or whatever, or foodies. You are not ordinary, please. Understand that, that you are not ordinary. You have taken the place of Aaron. That's where you are today. That's what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. He has made us priest unto God. Priest unto God. So why do I see this? We are priests unto God. Separation is most important. Get out of the world. Get out of the world system. Get out of those people and come to Christ. And come and reign with him. Leave those things that we've been doing before. And come and walk with Jesus Christ. The king of glory. You won't have a problem in this life. Amen. I'll tell you a little secret, a little story that happened yesterday. Yesterday I left here around 4 o'clock. You know, I've discovered that me, I don't live anymore. There's something that our pastor told me last year, no, 2019 in August. It was a very difficult thing for me to do. She said I must stop it. I will never forget it. There's something I know about my pastor. She doesn't play around. She doesn't care who you are. If there's something wrong, she will tell you straight. She's not going to tell somebody. She'll tell you. This one, you stop it. She said that on August 2019. I'll never forget. And when I left church, I went to home. Because there's one person I trust. And that's Jesus. I went down on my knees. I said, my Lord, you know this task is difficult for me. But you are on the throne. You are my God. Please help me through. And I have win, been victorious all the way since that day to date. I thank Jesus for that. Because by my own strength, I will fail. Yesterday I left here, I went to, you know, I understand who I am. There's things that I didn't, I didn't understand before about me until I come to Christ. I come, until I come to the Holiness Revival Movement, they build me up. Really, I'm strengthened inside. You cannot shake me. You can try. You can't. <laughs> I went to, uh, to his gate because I needed, I needed something. When I went to one of the shops, it was closed. I met this white guy. I said, are they still open? He said, no, they're closed. You have to go. I said, OK, I'll go to the other shop. <coughs> That's what I was saying in my spirit. But there's something that happened. Right? <coughs> that something happened. Something was pushing me. Go. I said, no, they're closed. Why should I go? I'm going to go to the other side. Hey, hey, go. I said, oh, the big boss saying so. Let me go. When I arrived at the door, they opened the door and said, get inside. Then they close up. Wow. This Jesus is alive. Amen. Don't play with him. You know, God will sacrifice a sinner for your life. Amen. If you did something, somebody wants to kill you, 
They won't. They will kill your enemy for you. But we don't know these things. Why? Because we are still living in the world. We are still ruled by the system of the world. The minute we come out of that system and start believing who is God, I'm telling you, you won't have a problem. We have youth today. They say I must speak to the youth. May I like to speak to everybody? At youth, they have a great task, a big task ahead of them. It's not easy. I was there, I know. It's a big task. But you won't, you won't win, win this task if you don't do what Mama said yesterday. I believe you know what she said. She gave us three triplets. Another triplets, not righteousness, holiness, and truthfulness. Another one. Who can tell me what those triplets are? Doing? Because we live a code. It's Jesus, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's righteousness, it's holiness, and truthfulness. Mm. There's another one again. What is that one? The other one they didn't talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. We're talking about it another day. Which one is that, the other one? The way the truth and the life. Sorry? Don't mumble. Oh. If you know, stand up and tell us. The way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, you were not here yesterday. Oh. Who was here was listening to what Mama was saying. My brother. Uh, prayer, fasting, and reading the word. Did you hear? Oh, no. <laughs> Those are the triplets. Yes. If you don't have these three people, these three plates, you won't win this struggle. Mm. You won't. It's difficult out there. It's really difficult. They mustn't lie to you. Christianity is not a joke. Yes. The day you say, I'm a Christian as a youth, I'm telling you, trouble is coming your way. Mm. Trouble is coming your way. Not small ones, big ones. Submission to these three, you will win. Mm. Jesus said, occupy until I come. Amen. Are you occupied? Mm -hmm. Little, little problem, you, you rush to Pastor Lulu. When is she going to get a rest? Everybody's got a Bible here, not so. Mm -hmm. What is that Bible for? For decoration in your house. Are you decorating your house with that Bible? Yeah. Read it. If you don't understand, ask Jesus Christ. He's there for you. He's your priest. He's sitting at the right hand of God where you are. Amen the place of peace. So what are you afraid of? There are people who are still praying today, God, I'm sleeping, please watch over me. Watch over you for what? Where are you? <laughs> huh? You must understand where you are. You are in Christ. Don't leave that place. If you made, if you did something wrong, don't be afraid. you got the right to approach the Holy of Holies and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Yeah. You don't need any pastor to come and pray for you. Yes. You don't need your next door neighbor to come and pray for you. No. Go. You have that right. Jesus has opened that door for you to come in. You only go in there if you are righteous and holy and truthful. But if you still have to live in forces, you are wasting your time. You are like a dog that Jesus said this morning. He said, outside are dogs. So be careful you don't become a dog. Be careful you don't become a dog. It's not me. I didn't write the Revelation 22. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that it's Jesus Christ. He was saying this this morning. He said, outside are dogs. Who are dogs? Those who steal. Those who are still worshipping their clothes. There's a lot of people, even here, Christians, they worship their clothes, not Jesus Christ. They worship their beds, not Jesus Christ. They worship their food. They worship their shoes. That's what Christians do nowadays. When they go to church, it's competition. When they go to church, they want everybody to see what they, how they are dressed. Those things are useless. They only help you in the day that you live here. Yeah. Understand who Jesus is. You know, he died on the cross. Salvation is free. Amen. But this life that we are living is not free. First 